You know, uh, sometimes on this show, uh, I like to talk about what everybody else is talking about. Sort of like the, the nation's water cooler conversation. And, oh, California, you might want to ask Oregon what water is. But <laughs> right now, what everyone everywhere is talking about is Donald Trump. And the press release that he put out in which he said, Donald J. Trump is calling for a total and complete shutdown of Muslims entering the United States until our country's representatives can figure out what is going on. He wants to ban Muslims, a fourth of the world's population. How is that going to work? I'm not sure how the TSA would be able to test you for your religion. <laughs> Though I will say their pat-downs are thorough enough to determine if you are Jewish. <laughs> Usually I, usually, I have to pay somebody a fair amount of money to do that to me. <laughs> or perhaps we could just casually ask people trying to enter the country, hey, I'm trying to recalibrate my compass. Do you know which direction Mecca is? <laughs> but here's the thing. I don't know why everyone is so surprised. Trump has already proven he's willing to offend every group in America except white people. And frankly, as a white person, I feel left out. <laughs> it's his entire electoral strategy. Trump says something shocking, then all of us on TV spend days repeating it, giving him millions of dollars worth of free airtime. So I would rather not give him more of it and simply say that I agree with this bipartisan message from Republican Senator Lindsey Graham and Democratic Philadelphia Mayor Michael Nutter. Tell Donald Trump to go to hell. He's an ass. Donald. <laughs> Donald. I didn't think it was possible anymore, but you have brought a nation together. <laughs> and now I will never talk about you again for like six minutes. <laughs> but I don't have to, because there are plenty of other candidates to talk about. A cornucopia of people you don't know are running for president and care even less. But. There's somebody out there that people care about, but I haven't talked about in a while, and it's Hillary Clinton. Even though she is the presumptive Democratic nominee, these days she's harder to find than her emails. And <laughs> I don't think that's a coinky dink. The latest CNN ORC Glade plug-in poll has her <laughs> ahead of rival Bernie Sanders 58% to 30%, with former Maryland Governor Martin O'Malley registering just 2% exactly the same as the milk that is more exciting than him. <laughs> and, and, that 2% is up from 1.8% in November. That is a 0.2% surge that some are calling Martin Omentum. <laughs> Not many, just me so far, but some. And it appears that Secretary Clinton isn't willing to risk her lead by doing something crazy like going out in public. Just look at the Democrats' debate schedule. So far, they've had one primetime weeknight debate, and their next debate is on CNN December 19th, the Saturday before Christmas, otherwise known as the TV scheduling phantom zone. <laughs> the only ones watching will be people stranded at the airport weeping into their Panda Express. <laughs> and I don't think this is an accident. I don't think this is an accident at all, and neither do Hillary Clinton's rivals. They're accusing that the debate schedule was put together to protect Hillary Clinton. The smaller the audience, the less likely it is for Clinton to have a prominent stumble and lose her lead. Exactly. Hillary can avoid having any big gaffes if she sticks to small audiences. So to play it safe, I suggest she appear only at Martin O'Malley events. <laughs> so. <laughs> so. With Hillary Clinton AWOL, you can see why I am so tempted to boot up some of the orange pony. Because he is always talking on the camera. But you know what? There are other candidates who are talking on camera, too. Like former neurosurgeon and eyelid advertising opportunity. <laughs> Dr. Ben Carson. Last week, Dr. Carson went before the Republican Jewish Coalition and told them how he would handle the Palestinian terror group, Hamas. The challenge is the split between Fatah and Hamas. Fatah and Hamas operate in a constant state of conflict. Hamas rules the Gaza Strip. 
Mm, it's true. It's true. Hummus does rule the Gaza Strip. <laughs> and frankly, we all falafel about it. <laughs> and the efforts to fix it have been pitiful. <laughs> no wonder they dominate the Baba Ganoush cycle. <laughs> so I can just offer a tahini bit of perspective here. I believe America cannot take our security for pomegranate. Because terrorism is a greater threat than global shawarming. <laughs> And if you think the situation is just going to go away, you're couscous. Mm. 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 That is thick. Mm. But again, Carson is not the only one to talk about. I mean, what about Jeb Bush? Sorry. Sorry, I blacked out there for a second. I, I must have been talking about Jeb Bush. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, tell you what, uh, we'll be right back. What was I talking about? Oh, right, Jeb Bush. Oh. 